Today, we have a gentleman as a patient who has this wonderful voice and you feel like he should be doing voiceover work and he may, I don't know. But anyway, you hear me have the same conversations with several patients about treating fungal nails or diabetic foot care. And this is what a specialist does. The specialist sees people coming in for the same thing quite frequently and so we have I won't call it a, an automatic spiel that we go into because every patient is different and you try to uh, talk to them about the issue and the treatment very much tailored to them. So you'll see us in this video talking about treatment for fungal nails, why to treat, why not to treat, and uh, also a little bit about his diabetic foot care. But other than that, just some great nails and I hope you enjoy the video. This is what we in the profession refer to as gunk. <laughs> well, you've got way less blood than I get. Yeah. Well, up here, the skin is so close under the nail yep. that when I took off a little piece of nail right there, it took off a little skin with it, but it'll be fine. We'll put a little antibiotic Band-Aid on it. Oh, I get lots, lots of blood. That's when I decided I, I you know, I got to find somebody to help. Okay, good. Well, yeah. Okay, let's switch over to the other side. Good. Yeah, it isn't going to go away without the medication, but um, is it bad? No, it's not going to go into your bloodstream. It's not going to make you sick. It stays in the skin and the nails. Okay despite what the YouTube ad that I've been seeing all over the place about it killing you says. Well, with the diabetes and other stuff going on with me, I don't know that I really want to do something that might do something to my liver. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's something that should you decide down the road you want to do. Listen, I, I feel like it's, it's safe enough as long as we're following your blood work. I put my own mother on the antifungal medications. Um, but if we can keep this thinned out and comfortable for you, then you don't have to do anything. It really, if, so for example, if the fungus made that left big toenail or like this toenail here just way too thick and you kept getting open sores on the skin under the nail from the pressure, then I would say, yeah, you probably should do something. But if we see you every couple months, every two to three months, and we can keep these thinned out and comfortable, then no, you don't have to treat it. It's not like, you know, it, it, it's not like a bacterial infection that can go, that can cause you to go septic. It's, it's different. So it's the same fungus that causes athlete's foot and it affects the skin and the nails and it just stays there. So we can revisit it later. Okay. We don't. You don't have to make a decision today. Are, are you willing to see me every couple of months? Absolutely. Oh, that'd be great. What did you think you had to pass a test or apply? Or? I never know. <laughs> okay. Let's get these get one more. Kind of put the Dremel tool to uh -huh. I used to use a Dremel. This has a vacuum in the handpiece, yeah, though. I saw that. That's phenomenal. Yeah. When my wife and I were first together, she, she wore artificial nails. And, uh, I see her grinding with the, you know, the heavy emery boards and that, and I said, I got an idea that you might like. So, brought out the grandma. I, I, I went and bought her own one. Oh, she thought that was great.
Yeah. So we'll we'll get you on the schedule, and each time you come in, we'll have you schedule your next appointment, so that we know you got it in the books. And um, and then yeah, and then we'll just the goal is preventive care. I love that. Yeah. But everything else looks good. Your skin looks good. I don't see any areas that I'm concerned about breaking into open sores or anything like that. Sometimes I get something really that looks really bad below the left big toe. Okay. And it, it, it almost looks like it was burned um, just behind the nail on the top. Oh, up here? Yeah, and it looks just, God, it looks awful. Hmm. Well, sometimes the fungus in the form of a yeast, which is part of the life cycle of the fungus or bacteria, can get down under the cuticle and cause an infection back here. Um, <coughs> it does happen. Okay. But, um, all right, so it's not really bleeding, but let's just get a little antibiotic on it for a day. So the second from the last toe on the left, that nail splits? Yes. And you know, I always find that with my sock. It's really exciting. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, you, so you're talking about right right over yeah, here. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, so the nail is growing in in like two separate pieces. And so when we file it, you just want to file it and make sure that you, you could always take an emery board. Sure. And just kind of file it like this to make them match and make them smooth. There's nothing sticking out now. Okay. Perfect. And so again, we may be able to manage that um, just with routine care. Okay. Great. Um, there's also a procedure where we could take that little extra piece of nail off if we have to. But these are all things we can talk about once we see how you do with this. All right. So the two takeaways: not walking without shoes or some kind of sole, and getting into the habit of checking the bottoms of your feet and in between your toes visually every night. Okay. Okay, so, you know, kind of doing that now. Let me just see if i got to get a little bit more out of this. Does this always look this color, or does it feel like it's... Kind of, I think this is what you were talking about with the other nail. Okay, oh no, same tail. No. Yeah, so here's here's what I recommend. I'm talking about this right here. Yeah. Looks like a little bit infected. Sorry. Sorry. No, I'm sorry. Um, that was a very Canadian sorry. Are you Canadian? No. no. Mm -hmm. um, so what I'm going to recommend for this is that um, you soak it for 20 minutes in salt water. How, warm, much, how much salt? Warm salt water, about that much. Okay. Yeah, like what you would gargle with. Okay. Um, and do that for a week and then keep a little Neosporin or Bacitracin over it. Okay. And if this hasn't improved in a week, I want you to call me and we'll put you on a short course of an oral antibiotic for it. Okay. So apparently, the, the, the liver makes what glucose that puts it in into your blood that's your pancreas or the pancreas no glucose we get from what, what do we, we get eat? from the liver that you the bumps liver, up our blood sugar as my physiology professor described it is the toxic waste dump of the body it's the new jersey of the body he would say oh, <laughs> um, you want to hand me his sentence so the liver is what detoxifies our blood mostly, and it, it makes some products that, that, are, that we use for clotting. Um, so the, and the liver, interestingly, is the only is the only organ in our body that regenerates. Yeah, I've heard that. Yeah. Okay. So if the enzymes go up, it means that we're not getting the toxic waste out of the blood. It's not functioning well. Um, and that's not a good thing. Because what, what, 
I mostly don't eat in the morning. Okay. Just, I just haven't for years. Okay. And when I was doing the uh, cardiac rehab, uh -huh. I went in one time, I hadn't eaten anything. My blood sugar was 140. Mm -hmm. I did the stuff, it was 200. Mm -hmm. So the next week I ate something before and it went down after the exercise. Yeah, that's your diabetes. Okay. Um, so it's that's not kind like, of scary. Yeah, that's why you need to stay on top of it and keep that A1C down where it is. So thank you for letting us do the video. Sure, of course. And we'll see you back in two and a half months. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. You're very welcome.